Hi all, this is uh, Stuart Rawlings and Ancus Jane. Uh, the topic to, for today is uh, monologue v dialogue and how to put that into your communication with uh, with other people. Um, this is a topic that came up a couple of weeks ago in one of my coaching calls with uh, with Ankush. And it was about how I was posting quite a lot, posting a lot of um, personal things on, on Facebook and, and trying to get engagement or you know, just trying to put things and information across and I wasn't getting as much engagement as, as I'd like or I wasn't getting as much feedback from other people as I would have liked and Ankush pointed out that my posting style is quite, uh, it is in a monologue style so it's, you know, it's very useful for me and, and superficially I think for other people to have a look at it but then it's very difficult to then actually apply what I was trying to say or what I was trying to put across and what was important to me. So Ankush pointed out that I wanted to try and make my conversations, you know, whether this was in on Facebook or with actual people in the street or, or on Skype, I needed to make them a bit more of a dialogue. So to have a bit more of engagement or, or, or so how other people can relate uh, to what I was saying and how they put that into their into their lives. Uh, so what I wanted to do was I thought this was really really important uh, distinction to make, and because I can see that from my perspective, if someone is not involving me in the conversation and I can't uh, view you know how I can apply that, then it's not a very useful post or not a very useful uh, conversation to have. So what I wanted to do is have a quick call with uh, with Ankush and get his thoughts on monologue v dialogue and to see how he puts it into play in his business and in his conversations and his uh, blog posts. So, Kush, so I'm gonna, the first question I guess that I have is, you know, how do you see monologue versus dialogue? And how do you put that into play, or how do you, how are you conscious of that when you put out content? Well, <clears throat> first of all, good morning, Stuart. Um, thanks for for doing this. Um, this is a really interesting distinction for coaches who are using social media to create coaching clients. Mm. And the actual terms monologue versus dialogue was something I originally heard from a coach called Jason Goldberg, um, who's a colleague of mine <coughs> who I met through through my coach, Steve Chandler. Um, and subsequently, Steve and I have spoken about this distinction numerous times on, on our coaching calls. Um, because ultimately, um, coaching is a relationship business. So I know, you know, <clears throat> I've seen people suggest that you can create coaching clients through Facebook using a traditional marketing model, which is um, put some Facebook adverts out there, have those um, offer something for free, leave them to a landing page, get their email address, get them into a funnel, upsell, 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 and eventually maybe they'll get into a one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship with you. Um, whereas um, what, what I seeing this distinction is that when we're putting stuff out on Facebook and I've got clients from Facebook kind of from day one of my coaching practice is because I didn't really use Facebook in that way. It was more Facebook and, um, and any social media can be a tool to develop a relationship with someone because that's ultimately what people are paying for. So, um, how does this apply to monologue? Like, what's that distinction? Most coaches, and, and, and I've done this too, when they um, put stuff out onto, onto Facebook or, or Instagram or Twitter or, or, or whatever, it's, it's coming from a place of, I'm an expert and here's some information, here's what I'm sharing with you. And that's not bad, but it's a different kind of um, content. It's different than, than something which has a dialogue right so rather than um, because you know 
<clears throat> when you have something which is dialogue, i.e. two-way, when it's designed to be an interaction between you and the person reading it or, or looking at what you're putting out there, that's when you more move into having more of a relationship. And this isn't about manipulating people. This is about, I mean, this makes sense that if someone is going to hire you as a coach, they need to understand what it is that you do and understand that it's going to be a good investment for them. And they can't do that by just reading stuff from you. They can get an idea about that. But it's much better if the, the more closer the interaction with you that they have, the more likely they are to know whether the investment's going to be good for them. And so well, what, what does that look like on, on Facebook? <clears throat> and I, and I, I need to add something that some people try and do this artificially. So you can you can put a post out on Facebook and, and marketers do this, which gets a lot of engagement, but it's not really adding value. So this is just one aspect, this distinction of, of creating clients. You know, if, if you put out there on Facebook today, um, do you think Donald Trump is a good president? You'll get a lot of interaction most likely on that post. Is it gonna lead to people hiring you as a coach? Probably not, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not only about dialogue, mm. but if if you're putting something out there, um, <clears throat> I, I remember uh, a few years ago I put something out on a group for coaches, and I was sharing a bit of content, and I put on there, um, and if anybody would like to discuss this further, if anyone doesn't really get this, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. That's inviting people into a dialogue. Mm. That's not mm. saying hey, this is what I think, and then sit and wait and hope someone's going to contact me. It's inviting people into that. Mm. Um, if someone comments on uh, on a Facebook post of mine, I always try and comment back on it. I try and engage with people. I try and build that relationship. Um, if someone comments and there's something more for me to say, I might send them a, a private message um, just to follow up with something that I maybe um, – want to share with them that's not suitable for for a public forum mm. and and i and i do this <clears throat> you know sometimes uh, over years I've, I've had a client sign up with me in the last few weeks um who you know i had a um they they got to know me through facebook we interacted a few years ago and here or there if they comment on something i might go hey you want you might want to check this out or mm. here's something i recorded on that topic or you know really do check out this book and it's it's an interaction and then like a few years down the line when it's been the right time that they have wanted to hire a coach they've um you know that they've hired me because they they know they've got an experience of what it is to engage with me um now what i'm not saying is um just do this all day and, and you know waste a lot of time mm. but you can do this without really taking a lot of time up you know it, it doesn't take you more than a you know, 20 seconds to, you know, just, just send someone something or interact with them. But I, <clears throat> but I see people who are just posting and, you know, in, in my opinion, you're better off posting on, on Facebook once a week, mm -hmm. but really engaging and helping people mm -hmm. through your post, through, through their comments, replying to them, you know, maybe even offering them a conversation as opposed to posting every day, looking really impressive um, but not really encouraging a two-way conversation and have people be impressed by you and intimidated by your your knowledge and, and uh, wow, you're so impressive, Stuart. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really lead to clients because people don't hire coaches necessarily because they're intimidated by them. They hire them because they've got a relationship with them. Mm. So I guess the, the image that's coming into my mind of when we talk about monologue is when I first came to self development and I you know I started talking to yourself and, and a few other people, I was having insights and then I was trying to preach that to my family and my friends. And what I'm envisaging is that a monologue is just that. You know, kind of putting content and putting you know, relating it back to Facebook, is putting content out there and saying, Oh, you know, this, this, this but it's not really it's not really encouraging the conversation or their engagement. So, you know, when I was just effectively putting my posts out to my family and my friends, but obviously in, in person, you know, I wasn't getting any reaction other than other than probably negative reaction. So is, is, is does that sound 
I'm just trying to trying to create a kind of image in people's heads so they can can identify the difference between the two. Yeah, that's one one example of it, um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of coaches can can relate to that. I know I can relate to that. That when I started learning about psychology and personal development, you know, I would go around telling people, mm. and and I got a lot of pushback. People weren't very interested. Mm. Um, whereas you know, having a dialogue with people, yeah, that you know, people aren't really going to engage and have dialogue with you when you're telling them and preaching to them. Mm. Um, but you know, and you're very good at this. You you sometimes share stories about your own insights without preaching, mm. um, and even just sometimes asking like, does, has anyone else experienced this, or mm. what? You know, something like that. You, you get more engagement um, because it's real, and that's that's the thing. It's got it's got to be genuine. It's got to be sincere. Mm. Um, and, and like I said, I learned, you know, this distinction, the name from, from Jason Goldberg, and he's really a master of it. You know, he's on social media a lot, but he's not just, a, you know, using social media just to make himself look good. Um, he's using social media to, to actually engage with people, build a relationship and have clients. Mm. And, and it's really interesting. I spoke to a guy a few years ago who was a coach who had a, a really big following on, on social media but he was struggling to get one-on-one -on -one clients. And so we spoke about that. And I said, well, there's no relationship. You've got all this content that you put out. People like it. They enjoy it. They sign up to maybe your online courses. Mm. But in order for them to hire you for one-on-one -on -one coaching, they need, to, they need to be able to speak to you to understand what one-on-one -on -one coaching is. And he was like, well, no, I give all this stuff out for free. I'm not going to give anything else. I'm going to give them more of my time. Mm. And I was like, well, well, then you, you won't get clients because that's not how it works. It's a relationship business. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've spoken over the years to so many people who have far bigger social media followings than I have, but are making less money, have fewer clients. Um, and that's not, oh, look at me, I'm so great. It, it's because it's not about that. If it was, if it was about having a big presence and having lots of fans and followers and subscribers, then I would be focusing on that in my business. Mm -hmm. But I don't because there's no need to. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if we can <clears throat> build those close relationships with people um, through our engagement, through social media, through, um, you know, I, I like to think of um, people as, as colleagues. I am, I, um, when I do my men's immersions, you know, I purposely don't sit on a bar stool mm. um, because, you know, I, I want us all to be on the same playing field. We're, we're, we're kind of looking at things together. Mm. You know, this isn't a, a parent, you know, child relationship or a teacher student, you know, a coach is by your side. Um, I, I heard Steve Chandler describe it the other day as, as kind of like a co pilot that you're on a journey and, and a coach is your co-pilot. Mm. So, you know, dialogue comes about from, from, you know, that viewpoint and in engaging with someone on an equal playing field, not trying to be impressive, not saying, look at me, I'm an expert. I've got an Amazon best-selling book, mm. um, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not saying hold yourself back and don't, 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 you know, um, promote when you've done things well, that's fine. Mm. But if it's only that, then, then people will get intimidated by you. People are often scared of being judged, like, oh, my God, Stuart's done all this stuff. If he knew what I was like, mm. you know, he, he, he wouldn't talk to me. Mm. And, um, and I spoke to a coach the other day who said they were, they were concerned that, um, that their coach wouldn't work with them mm. because they weren't playing at a high enough level. Mm. And, and they were intimidated, right? And that's not very conducive to... To growing a business, you know, if, if you're just impressive and intimidating, mm. no one's going to want to hire you. Mm. And, and I know I've spent, if I hold my hand up, I've spent time in the past trying to do that, um, not realizing, no, it's, it's about dialogue. If I have a post which has one person comment on it, but that person is, is impacted and we get into a dialogue and we, we go back and forth and we end up in a conversation and they hire me, mm. that's better for my business mm. than having a post out there which gets a thousand comments and a thousand likes. 
um, makes me look good, mm. but but nobody, but it doesn't develop into a professional relationship. Mm, mm. And I, I know I know we've gone a bit over the time that we allocated to this, but I just wanted to make one more last question slash comment, uh, just to make it clearer in my head. Um, so really, the key uh, element to this is not necessarily the the post itself; it's what comes after. You know, it's it's how you then engage with people who have I don't know liked or or, or just commented on it. That's that's what makes it the dialogue. The you know that that <coughs> that subject. It's, it's both. Mm. It's both. Mm. It's both. It's um, it's it's what you're posting if you're trying to be impressive and. Mm. You know, you're not going to invite dialogue. You're not going to invite people to comment yeah. on your post or your Instagram post or whatever, or your blog. I think this applies to that too. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to invite people to comment on it and engage with you or reach out to you. So it's mm-hmm. it, it's what you post, but it's also you're right how you follow up with that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So if you, um, you know, the, like I said, there are some coaches who say, "Well, I'm putting this stuff out there. I'm not charging for it. Mm-hmm. If you want any of my time, pay me." And, and they're very cold and distant. Whereas if you are more generous with your time and engage with people and, and help them, and that's really what we're in this profession for, mm. then it's more likely they're going to hire you. And if they don't, then they're doing so from a position of better understanding what it is that you do. Mm. And, and, and my opinion is with, with people who are good coaches – the problem isn't that people aren't aware of you. Mm. That if you're a good coach, the the real problem is people aren't really aware of the service you're offering. Mm. Mm. And so, if if you're a good coach and a thousand people, or, or even a hundred people, say, really got to experience what your coaching was like, mm. if you're a good coach, they'll want more of that, mm. Mm. right? So it's not it's not about brand recognition. It's not like you need to have a million people following you online and, oh, yeah, we know Stu, he's a coach. Mm-hmm. Most people don't really know what coaching is, and coaching with each coach is different. So they need to have an experience of you to make a real, um, you know, decent decision for themselves. And I don't want anyone to hire me if I'm not a good fit for them and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is really about um, a sensible, in my opinion, a sensible way of growing your practice you know, without um, overselling, without, you know, resorting to manipulation. Mm-hmm. It's about developing relationships with people for them to get a feel for who you are, you you for them, mm-hmm. and then where appropriate, they, you know, you both decide to continue mm-hmm. or or, uh, or not. But it, at least it's done from a, from a place of understanding as opposed to a place of... Um, uh, you know, I'm impressed by you, therefore I should do this because, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're someone who knows better than I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can I can definitely see that as as a lot better place to come from rather than. <clears throat> I think I think um, and, and drawing this to a close, but I think that if when I've looked at people's posts in the past and if they've just tried to, or if I read it as if they're um, trying to impress me, um, or tell me what to do, then then definitely I don't feel very engaged with that. Mm. All right. Me too. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we've gone uh, a fair amount over the allotted time, so uh, just drawing this to a close now. And I just want to thank you very much for your time, Kush. Uh, it's, it's a bit, I found it a very useful word, 20 minutes, near 20 minutes. Um, I hope everyone else has as well. You're most welcome, Stuart. You're most welcome. And, and uh, you know, check out Jason Goldberg, check out Steve Chandler. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are coaches who are doing this this well. Um, and uh, if you're a coach and you're listening to this, then uh, you know ha- have a think about this and, and perhaps move away from trying to look impressive, trying to look good, and, and instead actually engage with people, help people, serve them first, um, and, uh, and and try and walk your talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'll definitely check out. And, and what I'll do actually is, is I'll post links to uh, to both Steve's and, and Jeff's website and uh, and any other useful information. Uh, under this video. All right, great. Cheers.